Hello YouTube, my name is Ines, I love everything AR and VR related and today I want to show you how I made this business card effect. I uploaded a video about it like one year ago and people asked me to make a tutorial for it. So here I am, making a tutorial for you. <laughs> it's a very simple image tracker setup, so it's very easy to set up and um, it looks really cool. So let's get right into it. I already prepared some 3D models for this effect. This is a basic character, like a self-portrait. And I also added three items that I want to show and hide on the tab. For the items, I placed the pivot point in the center of mass, so we can scale them like this. And for the avatar itself, the pivot point is at the bottom, so we can scale it like this. And then I exported everything as an FBX. But let's jump to Spark AR now. Open this template, the poster AR effect. So it already has everything set up that we need. It's a basic image tracker. And we change the texture of the image tracker here to the picture that you want to track. In this case, this is my business card. You can already see some 3D models floating around. Let's just delete that because we don't need it. Instead, I import my own 3D models like the avatar. Just drag and drop it into the asset panel. And then I drop it under the drag here scene object. That already looks pretty nice. So let's also add the three items I prepared. To keep everything organized and neat, I will add a, another null object. And then I drag all of my content underneath this object as a child. This will be very useful if I want to be able to animate everything together, like I will show you in a minute. Let's fix the rotation real quick with the rotate tool. Now here's a little trick if you find the rotation of the poster annoying, just click on the image tracker and rotate it 90 degrees here. As you can see, our 3D model is a bit dark, so let's fix it. Click on the directional light and rotate it so that your model is well lit. You can also use the rotate tool for that if you don't want to type in the values here. And we can also play around with the ambient light and just make the whole scene in general a bit brighter. There we go, looks pretty good, let's test it. Click on the little phone icon here you can either send it to your Instagram or after the link is prepared, you can also send a test link to your friends if you want to share it. And this is the effect so far. The image gets tracked and we can see our 3D model popping up. Looks pretty good already, but we can improve it even further. So let's add some animations. But first I use the scale tool to make my model a bit bigger. So now it's time for some coding. Let's get into it. Go to view and open the patch editor. So the editor greets us with a whole bunch of stuff and um, it's just some default instructions that comes with Spark AR. We will look into that later, but for now just group it together and um, I don't know, just shove it into a corner where you don't have to see it and don't have to think about it. Let's focus on animation instead. So our goal here is to scale our model up whenever the target is found. Quick note from editing Ines here. I noticed after recording the video that um, the thing that I wanted to do here, like scaling the whole content when the marker is found, is actually already built in in this um, bunch of instruction notes that I conveniently just moved out of the way. I would recommend to still watch that part since I'm explaining how the image tracker found works and how the animation nodes work, but you don't have to follow it necessarily. To check if the marker is found, click on the image tracker and under interactions, create a producer patch. This will give us a pulse every time the image tracker is found. So let's attach an animation node after it. It gives us also a pulse node in between, if you noticed. And that's good, we need it later. To make the animation work, we still need a transition node after it. It has a start and an end value. 
and we will transition between those two. We want to transition the scale values of our model. Scale is a bit wonky, so let's fix it real quick, make it an even number. So now we know that our end value should be 2, 2, 2. Let's put these values in here. So far this animation is not connected to our model whatsoever. So if you click the tiny button next to scale and connect it to our animation nodes, now we are actually animating our object. I set the curve to overshoot out to have a little bounce effect and the duration of the animation to one and a half seconds. We also want to scale our items though. And um, this is pretty much the same process, just on a screen tab instead of a tracker found. To add a new node, click right anywhere in the patch editor and search for screen tab. So here I noticed a little mistake. I exported my items a bit wrong from Blender, so my pivot points are not in the middle of these items. If I want to scale or rotate them, they will always have their pivot point at the bottom, just like the avatar. But I wanted to have them scaled from the center of mass. You could fix it by just moving the object in Blender to zero and then exporting them again and replacing them. But I can also show you a little trick that makes it a bit easier for us in this situation now. So in this case, I would add a new null object and let's call it cat pivot. And then we position it at the center of the item that we want to scale. Something like this. And now we take the cat object and place it as a child of the cat pivot. And now, instead of scaling the cat itself, we scale the parent object. I will repeat this for the other two objects as well. And for a start, I scale down all of the objects to zero. To animate our items, we just need to repeat the same thing that we did with the avatar. So copy-paste these patches and connect them with the screen tab. It gives us a switch node here. We can just leave it how it is. One thing we need to change is the end value of our animations since we don't want to scale to 2 but only to 1. And I will also make it shorter. And again, click on the item and on the little arrow next to scale and connect it to the animation. To test this on our preview, click on the burger menu and on simulate touch. So now, if you tap the screen, you see that our first item is scaled up. Awesome! To make space for the next item, I want to scale it down again. So I connect the off output to the reverse. And now, when I tap again and the pull switches, the animation plays in reverse and the object gets scaled down again. So how do we cycle through all of the three objects? For this, I want to be able to count how many times we tap on the screen. So I will add a counter node. And if I attach a value after it, we can actually see that it goes up every time I tap the screen. Next, I want to compare this value to a exact number, for example, zero, but we need a bit more space for this. So let's say if this value equals one, play the first animation. And uh, of course also connect the toggle off with reverse. Now let's copy all of these nodes and paste them for all of our objects like this and connect them to the scale nodes. So next we want to connect the value to our other comparison nodes. So if we tap once, we will show the cat. If we tap twice, we show the second item and for the third time we show the third item. And with this, our basic setup is complete. Let's refresh and test it. One, two, three. 
perfect. But one thing you might notice is if we tap more than three times, nothing will happen. So if we want to cycle through all of these items and repeat itself, we need to put a three in the maximum count value. If you want the first item to be shown at the start of the lens, you can change these values to zero, one and two and a maximum count of two. So now it's time to refresh the link and look at it in Instagram. The model shows up. And if I tap once, twice and a third time, it will cycle through the items like intended. That already looks very juicy, but we can spice it up even more. So the last thing I want to add is some stars that appear when you tap. I start with an empty parent. Let's name it particles and then a right click and add a particle system. If you click on the emitter game object, you can see that there is a lot of settings that you can play around with and I would encourage you to just take your time and experiment a little bit. I changed the spray angle on all of the axes to 180 degrees. I'm pausing here real quick to show you that the texture is still not set and it looks like a chessboard. And to fix that, we have to assign a material to the effect. If you click on the little plus here and go on create new material, it will add a new material here and also in the asset panel. Rename it to whatever suits you, my particles for example. Now I import a texture I painted into the asset panel. And now we only have to assign it on the material under the texture drop down. And as you can see, if I press play, now the tiny stars will be emitted. Looks really cute, I think. I will speed up the process. I'm just playing around with some values, but you can find your own ideal particle system. So I think that looks pretty good. So I am moving the particle system back to the center of the object. And now I want to control the system so that it only emits particles whenever I tap. For this, um, we want to animate the birth rate from zero to 40 and back to zero. Good thing we already know how to animate values. Press the little button on the side to the birth rate and connect a animation node after the screen tap. Of course, also add the transition node. But here we need to change the actual values to a number instead of a vector 3. So we start with 0, our n should be 40. You can try a different curve, but I think linear is already good for this purpose. And then we just have to connect it to the emitter. So if we tap now, the emitter will transition from 0 to 40 in a duration of one second. That's a bit long, so I put 0.1 second there. And if you refresh, yes, this looks way better. So right now the emitter does not stop emitting. It will just continuously spawn stars. So we have to stop the animation at some point. For this, I want to add a delay node. And let's say after 0.3 seconds, it should stop again. And I connect the output to the reset node. Let's actually make it 0.5, so they have a bit more time to spawn. So there you have it. This is the finished effect. I think it looks pretty cute. It's interactive and fun. And um, you can always expand this if you want. But I think for a little business card effect, this is already pretty nice. Last but not least, let's look into this little group here that we successfully ignored the whole time. <laughs> so let's open it again. And I think it would be good to change some things in here. If you tried the effect on Instagram, you will see that the instructions do not match the actual image that we're tracking. So it still says search for this image and it will be the template image. We can change that in here in this little patch group. So this node here is the texture. Let's drag and drop our own image texture in here and um, connect 
our texture instead of this one. You can delete the old. And now you can even see in the preview here that our image will be shown. I'm setting these values manually to one because my image is square. And this whole area is for the text instructions like flip your camera, look around, stuff like that. So if you want, you can dive deeper in and make your adjustments. But for this tutorial, I will leave it how it is. So that was it. That was the tutorial. I hope you liked it. I hope it was helpful to you. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you want another tutorial for Snapchat, for example. If you want, subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment and I see you in the next video. Bye!